Richland, just a guy trying to help out the monarchs by planting some milkweed. And who feels me on this one? I'm about dead sick of the aphids. Back in 2017, aphids were discussed in the Pests and Predators video, and they are something that's quite harmful to your milkweed. Now there's over 5,000 different species of aphids, so there's certainly exceptions to what I'm about to say, but the following's generally true for most or all of those species. They are rapid asexual reproducers. All are female, and it takes only one to produce 100 more. It takes only about a week for a nymph to become an adult, and then after that, depending upon temperature, four to ten days for the adult to be able to reproduce. Oleander aphids, the yellow guys, also known as milkweed aphids, well, they're specific to milkweed plants. That usually is the one that we're talking about, though other aphid species could certainly be part of this too. They suck the sap out of milkweed, severely damaging the plant when they're in high enough numbers. And they definitely deter monarch butterflies from laying eggs on the plant leaves, or even just visiting the plant in general. Their excrement contains high concentrations of sugars, which is very attractive to several other types of insects, including possible monarch predators, and especially ants. Ants themselves, they will gobble down a monarch egg if stumbled upon for that quick shot of protein, or even a caterpillar, depending upon size, and they're never afraid to call for backup. The presence of ants on your milkweed is just a further advertisement to monarch butterflies. This is not the milkweed that you've been searching for. So what can you do? Well, just as it was in 2017, the best non-chemical methods for taking care of the aphids do involve the physical means of squishing them with your thumb, hosing them off, forceful enough to remove them but not enough to harm the plant, or if the situation calls for it and it's bad enough, actually cutting off the part of the plant that's heavily infested. Now that said, I do have a new tool for you that can be effective in helping out with the aphid problem. Cinnamon. Now let's be clear, this is not a solution to the aphid problem, but it is a tool that can be effective in helping it out, helping to reduce the number of aphids. And it does come with its own limitations, but I'll explain that a little bit later. First, let's start an experiment. So here's the milkweed that I planted a few years ago. And here's, nearby it, the milkweed that came with the house. Let's see what kind of ant and aphid activity we've got. I count a total of four patrolling on uh, these four stalks here. Yeah, already over here. One, two, So about 10 ants in total at the start of the experiment. And if we've got ants, well then they, there's probably going to be some aphids. Not adults, but we got some nymphs right there. Squish, squish. And, yeah, I do believe I see some wings on those. Squish, squish. See, I don't have anything really overrun yet because I've been out finger squishing these guys just about every day. Oh yeah. This one's got plenty going on. Alright, time for the experiment to begin. There were 10 ants on these stalks. They have since been shaken, so all ants have been removed. But I did not squish those ants, as I wouldn't want that to affect the experimental results. I want those ants to still have a chance to make it to the milkweed. Now I'm going to add some cinnamon. Just down here to the base. That is actually pretty convenient. Kind of all right here. If you want to get up these plants, you're going to have to go up these stalks. It's kind of the only path to them. Looks good, looks good. I'm not too worried if uh, some cinnamon gets on the leaves. We're good there too. Oh. Oops, hurt the leaf there. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, let's get a little bit more right there. All right. Looks good, looks good, looks good. The experiment has begun. Alright, so as you saw, I sprinkled some cinnamon down there at the base of my plants. Why? And what does that have to do with aphids on the leaves? Well, it's actually all about the ants. 
Ants and aphids have a symbiotic relationship in nature. They both benefit from each other's presence. Aphids excrete a sugary type of food that the ants thrive on. They can't resist it. And in return for this sweet treat, the ants act as the aphids' personal bodyguards. When we saw ants on the milkweed leaves kind of just pause, not really going anywhere, well, you saw an ant that was working security. They're patrolling the milkweed crowd and making sure that the aphids are okay and that any potential aphid predators, such as like ladybugs, are not around. Aphids on your milkweed is not cool, but aphids with ant bodyguards, that's even worse. Their population can kind of reproduce unchecked. They don't have any of the predators that are taking them out. Since ants are running defense and interference, the aphid population swells pretty quickly. Ants, however, they get this instruction and information on how to behave through chemical signals. The paths that lead to the milkweed, the instruction on where to patrol, all of that is through chemical signals that they drop down as they walk across the surfaces. Chemicals are laid down by the ant's abdomen, and then ants that follow are able to read the signal using their antennae. So what does the cinnamon do? That warm, familiar scent might stir up some memories of baking in Grandma's kitchen for some of us. For ants, though, the aromatics of cinnamon are just too overpowering. They can't handle it. The chemical signals of the cinnamon, well, it's like an overwhelming amount of white noise. It drowns out the chemical signals that the ants have left behind for each other. They are fairly hopeless at finding the trail and picking up the information. Like trying to hear instructions over the phone when you're standing next to a jet engine. With a layer of cinnamon at the base of the plant, the ants will be deterred from making their way back up to their posts or even finding the trail in the first place. At least, if it's anything like it was last year. Now, cinnamon can be effective for deterring ants, but as stated, it does have its limits. First off, it's not going to last indefinitely. The freshness here matters. The cinnamon that you sprinkle down, it's got about, you know, three or four days of being effective, and then its freshness is kind of out of date. Those aromatics do end up evaporating. It's just not as potent, not as strong. Second, if it rains, yeah, that kind of pretty much ruined that batch. That batch of cinnamon is done. And then third, this might just be an option for maybe a few plants. Not a huge field. You can certainly go broke trying to treat a whole lot of your milkweed plants. Now, editing might create the illusion it hasn't been that long, but it's actually been three and a half hours since we started that experiment. Let's go see how we're doing and see if there's any ant activity on my milkweed. All right. Let's see what we got. Illusory glance. I'm not seeing any ants on these guys. I'm not seeing any ants on these guys at all. I thought there might be, like, at least one. Check the other crowd. Now, it has been plenty of time for them to get back on there. You know, something I was going to try to show, too, was just to verify that there are still ants around here that could be climbing up there. But I can't do that for you because, like, there's no ants around here now. And there were plenty before, but like I don't even see any of the ants in this area. I don't know if the cinnamon just, you know, deterred them that much, or I'm just not lucky to find them right now. But point being, my milkweed area is quite devoid of any ants. That's pretty effective. Well, all right. So if you're anything like me and you've been battling the aphids this season, here's another tool for your arsenal. Not a magic bullet cure-all, but something that can be effective in conjunction with some of your other efforts of thumb squishing and hosing down that you might already be doing as part of your anti-aphid portfolio. I'm Rich Lund. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, thank you for your interest and efforts in trying to help conserve and save the monarch butterfly. I will see you next time.